Hello, my name is Sarah and today we're looking at the promise of God's perfect peace and our Bible verse is from Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. Perfect peace. This promise from God of perfect peace is something we surely all want, but I'm not sure we all know what it means, or even if we would all agree on what it means. In the next few minutes, I hope to share some of my thoughts, so it's as much a reflection as a devotion today. My Chambers Dictionary defines peace as a state of quiet, or a freedom from disturbance. And these definitions reminded me of a classic bedtime story which I used to read to my children, written by Jill Murphy, called Peace at Last, in which Mr Bear couldn't sleep. Snore, snore, went Mrs Bear. Tick, tock, went the clock. You get the picture. Definitely not a state of quiet, or freedom from disturbance. Eventually Mr Bear did get the peace he longed for and fell fast asleep, only to be woken up by the alarm clock. Over and over again, our peace is disturbed. It doesn't last. During the past few months, I'm sure there are many parents who long for a peace that will last, a state of quiet, a freedom from disturbance. Yet there are others who've had enough of that sort of peace. Many long for disturbance from endless days of staying in and staying safe. If we use the dictionary definition of peace, then perhaps it falls short of what we crave for. So it begs the question, what sort of peace do we crave? And where will we find it? How are we to understand the perfect peace described in the song of praise that we've just heard from the book of Isaiah? In these troubling times of uncertainty and sadness, where have you looked for peace? Where have you run? Who have you put your trust in? We naturally run to places or people or activities which the, we think will help us to get through the difficult times. But we've been denied some of those places of peace and refuge. Have you hidden yourself away and sought distractions, maybe from exercise, drink or Netflix? Perhaps you spent hours connecting with friends on Zoom or through social media. Or have you been anchored in and grounded on God. If I am totally honest with myself, back in the spring, I turned my back on God for a while and tried some of those things to distract myself from what was going on around me. I didn't exactly remove God from the equation, but my thoughts were not totally fixed on him. So perhaps it's not surprising that none of the distractions brought a perfect peace not even the exercise. It meant that I was challenged once again to understand where to find peace in the midst of pain and loss. It hasn't been enough to simply live with the peace of Christ in my heart when I've seen hospital staff at breaking point and families trying to make contact with loved ones either side of a glass screen. It's been important for me to look again at the life of Jesus to re-read the accounts of Jesus in the Gospel. Our Prince of Peace sought out those who were troubled, anxious and sick. He challenged those who were angry and vindictive. He suffered at the hands of violent soldiers. And each time he offered peace. Jesus wasn't immune from sorrow or pain and yet he lived out the peace 
which he promises to us through his Holy Spirit. I've concluded that perfect peace can only be found in Jesus and the demands he makes on our lives to be more like him. For us to seek out those who are troubled, anxious and sick, to speak up for those who are being harshly treated, those whose voices have been silenced. Just as Mr Bear in that bedtime story was disturbed by the snoring and ticking clock, we too can expect our comfortable lives to be disturbed. As Christians, I don't believe that our peace is to be found by hiding away from the world we find ourselves in. I believe it is to be found when our lives of comfort are interrupted, when we are prompted to act. It is to be found imitating the life of Jesus, establishing his kingdom on earth now. And as we learn to trust him and set our minds on him, we'll find ourselves running to him and seeking him out when we face times of trouble. And then we will truly understand God's promise that he will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him, whose thoughts are fixed on him. So shall we pray? Jesus, Prince of Peace, help us to live with you today, to see others through your eyes. Help us to keep our thoughts fixed on you and to trust you no matter what is going on around us, so that we may be kept in your perfect peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.